So last night I posted on my community which next setup guide you'd like to see. It was either Emulation Station or the awesome Retro FE. So obviously Emulation Station was the clear winner looking at the votes and today I'm going to be doing Emulation Station and Yuzu which is a very powerful and awesome Switch emulator. I'm going to be showing you how to configure your controllers in this, which files we need, how to make your video settings look a lot better for 4K gameplay for your Nintendo Switch collection. It's all in this video so check this one out. Okay then, before I start today's Emulation Station YouTube Switch setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like. It really helps my channel a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation as I release it, which is pretty much every day. So we're looking at emulating Nintendo Switch games today with the awesome Yuzu emulator. So let me just make you aware that if you don't own the game, you don't play the game, that's my policy. And please don't be asking for links for anything else. Like I say, strictly, if you don't own Switch games, you don't play them. So with that little warning out of the way, let's get on with this setup guide. So first of all, if you've not followed my initial setup guide for Emulation Station, you can check that out in my playlists. And what we're going to do first then is head over to the Yuzu official website, which is going to be in my description. And first of all, we're going to just go up to the compatibility tab at the top here. And this is going to tell you what works and what doesn't work within Yuzu. So as we can see at the top just here, we've got perfect, great, okay, bad, intro menu, won't boot, not tested. So 100% compatibility is going to be your perfect section, as it says, game functions flawless with no audio or graphical glitches. And in most cases, the section underneath great, most games work around 97, 98%. If we just scroll down, you'll see just here that 644 games of the Nintendo Switch library are actually imperfect. And this is improved every day. Every day we get updates for Yuzu. And in great, 813 games. So, you know, it's got a really good compatibility rate. And you can also take a look underneath, for example, if I want to play the game Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX, if you just click on this link, it will give you a little idea there of what users have found the gameplay experience on Yuzu to be like. So, you know, by all means, take a look at this if there's a particular game you want to emulate to make graphical enhancements, that type of thing. So once you've understand in red which games work and which doesn't work, if we go to the download tab at the top here, I'm gonna download this for Windows Times 64. But before doing that, you need to realize that if you don't have Microsoft Visual C++, you also need to download and install that. So I'm gonna quickly do that now. Just click on that link. And if you get unverified download blocked, we're unblocked that download unverified file. And just make sure you've got Visual C++, otherwise your games aren't going to launch or even the GUI of Yuzu isn't going to work. So let's just quickly install Visual C++. So I agree to the license terms and conditions, go to install. And should you get saying you want to allow this app to make changes, just press yes. Okay, so we're done. So just press close on that and you're pretty much good to go with that. So we're gonna download for Windows times 64. And again, I've got unverified download blocks. Now just be aware that Yuzu is a highly trusted website. So you've got no fears there of viruses. So again, download unverified file. Okay, so once you've downloaded Yuzu, you're going to end up with a Yuzu underscore install dot exe. That's executable. So what we're going to do is just open up emulation station folder. And I'm going to drag this one in a minute into my emulators folder. But first of all, in emulators, I'm going to create a new folder. So new folder. And I'm going to call this Yuzu. And I'm going to drag that installation exe inside of that Yuzu folder. If I go in there, what I'm going to do is just double left click on the XE. And then it's just a process of installing Yuzu.
And once this is done, you're just going to go down to exit. Okay, so as you can see, this has just created a log inside of the emulator's Yuzu folder that we've made. Okay, so once that's been installed, as you can see, we now got a Yuzu installer log, and we've also got a shortcut up here on the desktop. Next thing I'm going to do is drag this files folder into the emulator's Yuzu folder. Inside the files, you're going to need two separate files for this, prod.keys and title.keys. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is actually open up Yuzu. So if we just double left click on that shortcut. Here, encryption keys are missing. So if we just press OK on this, and what we're going to do is go to File, Open Yuzu Folder, and from here we got a folder inside called Keys. And if we go back to that Yuzu folder in my Files folder, I'm going to just copy and paste both of these inside of there. So right click and copy and paste. And that's it. So what we're going to do next, we obviously need a Nintendo Switch game. And for this, I'm using the awesome Kirby game, which is a fairly new game, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. And trust me, some of these Switch games, including this one, looks absolutely superb in 4K. Really good. So you also notice this is a .nsp file. So NSP files aren't the only file extension that Yuzu deals with. It also uses other file extensions such as .xcis. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is go back into my emulation station directory and in the ROMs folder, we're going to find Switch. If we just scroll down until we get to Switch. And here we go. So just drag your games inside of that Switch folder, like I've just done. And I think right now is a really good time to edit this. So for example, when we come to scrape this with an emulation station, it's likely not going to find anything because it's got all these letters in, uh, version zero, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to just right click on it, show more options, rename, and just delete everything we don't need. So you're just left with a title plus .nsp. Okay, next thing we're going to do then is we're going to head back into the emulator's Yuzu folder. And if I right click on the Yuzu shortcut, open file location, we're going to find a few different files in here, including a couple of folders. If we just drag these inside of the emulation station emulator's Yuzu folder, uh, replace the file in destination. And if we head back out, and let's open up emulation station. Okay, as we can see, we've now got Nintendo Switch appeared. And if we go inside Nintendo Switch, we can see our game Kirby in the Forgotten Land. So let's just scrape some artwork. So press start to get to main menu, scraper. And if we just scroll down, scrape the system, just make sure Nintendo Switch is checked back. And under content settings, we can scrape whatever we want just here. So uncheck or check whatever you want, back and start. And there we go. Now there's a good chance if we left all the letters and numbers on there, that probably wouldn't be scraping. So it's a good idea just to edit your file, just so you've got the name itself and the file extension. Awesome. And there we go. So let's boot up the game. And I'm also going to remind you that Nintendo Switch games, they use a system called shaders. So when you first play a Switch game, it's going to be very laggy. It's collecting data, that type of thing, and putting it into a folder for you. So what looks laggy isn't always going to be laggy. Just the initial time you play. And as it stands, I can't control this. I need to configure my emulator. So what I'm going to do is just exit out of here. I just close Yuzu. And we're going to quit out of Emulation Station. So start main menu, quit Emulation Station, and yes. Okay then, so we're going to go into Emulators, Yuzu folder, and we're going to go into this folder called Yuzu Windows MSVC. If we open up this folder, just scroll down, we're going to find Yuzu XE. If we go in there, 
Okay, so what we're going to do to configure controllers then is if we just go to emulation, configure, and you're going to find controls at the bottom just here. And what we're going to do is go over to input device, and your controller should be listed just here. I'm using a Google Stadia controller, so I'm just going to select this one. And I'm going to go over to new, and I'm going to give this controller mapping a name. So just call this just Jamie or whatever you fancy and press OK. After you created a profile name, just go to save that in. Your mapping should be automatically set. If it's not, it's just going to be a case of using each one of these buttons and then corresponding it with your controller. So once you've done that, press OK. And if we go back into emulation station again, Okay, like I was just saying, it's going to be laggy on the first time you play a game as it's using that shader system, but it's not always going to be like that. Normally when you play through, say, five minutes of it, most of that will be gone, and when you play it again, it will work fine. So what we're going to do next is take a look at some video settings. So if we exit out of Emulation Station, press Start, Main Menu, Quit Emulation Station, yes. What we're going to do is go into Emulator Spawner, Yuzu, and we are going to go into Yuzu Windows MS VC again. And we're going to open up Yuzu from here. And all we're going to need to do then is just go to Emulation, Configure. And from Configure, we're going to find a Graphics tab. Now, under Graphics tab, we got API. This is currently set to Vulkan. If you've got a game that should be working according to the Yuzu compatibility site, then change this over to OpenGL. But for me, this particular game works fine from using Vulkan. Uh, underneath, we got Device, which is my graphics card, uh, RTX 3050. And we got various different settings just there. So VSync mode, we're gonna want this enabled. That takes away any screen tear. And under full screen mode, we got two modes here, boardless window or exclusive full screen. So whichever works for you, whichever works best. Aspect ratio, I suggest putting this one or leaving it on to default 16 by nine. Switch games were designed for 16 by nine. Under resolution, this is a part where you can upscale your Switch collection to 4K. Now, if I just put this one up to around two times, we also got a filter option just here to make some games look a little bit better. But personally, I think leaving this to default is a good option. Under anti-aliasing methods, we got two options here. So anti-aliasing is going to take any jagged edges away. So again, whatever works best for you, FXAA or SMAA. And if we go over to the advanced tab at the top, 
under anastrophic filtering again this is going to make some of our textures look better in the game so if you've got a potato computer uh don't touch this it's un it's unlikely going to work and you're going to end up crashing or your game is going to lag so you know be very modest with these settings and just press ok on that now you're also going to find at the bottom some tabs just here handheld and dot so obviously for the best looking visuals you're going to want to put this one on dot and for an extra boost in performance in your switch games download razor cortex what this program does is takes away background processes running on your computer that you don't necessarily need when you're playing games so it frees up a hell of a lot of memory and I'm going to show you how to do this. I'll leave the link in my description for Razer Cortex 2. So mine's already set up, but it's just a case of going to Game Booster and then Boost Now. And as you can see, this is now releasing memory and just disabling background processes that are running. And as you can see, this is now freed up 2.37 gigabyte of memory. So it's pretty good results. So if we go back into Emulation Station again. And if I boot up my Switch game again, this time round, technically it shouldn't be so laggy because those shaders from the first part of this game have now been stored. And as we can see, as I loaded it up the second time, a bit more smoother than the initial time. And just bear in mind that I'm recording this video, so that's a separate process in itself. And also boosted up the resolution. So that's it for today's Emulation Station YouTube Switch setup guide. Just be aware that if you don't have a powerful enough computer, you might not be able to run Switch games at all. If you do have a powerful computer, then it's just a case of toggling around with your visual settings such as resolution and your anastrophic filtering and anti-aliasing. And like I say, if you can't see a game and it should be displayed, just change your API over. But that is it for this guide. So if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like. Also check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.